So our problem once again is we want to try to find out what is the probability that my flight is going to be delayed or that your flight is going to be delayed given certain conditions. We're not just saying on the average 10% of the flights are delayed so the probability is 10%. No, we've got more information than that. We know that we're flying at on Monday at 3 p.m. out of this airport into that airport. There's, you know, we know the weather conditions. We know the day of the week. We know the carrier. So there's lots of different predictor information that we have using which we want to predict. So in other words, we want the conditional probability that given all of this information, all the predictor information, which together I'm simply lumping into this variable called x. So given x, what is the probability of delay? Of course, we already know that we didn't have many combinations for x in our data. I remember I had mentioned earlier, you looked up and you found only three cases in fact, you were lucky to find three cases. All of them were not delayed, but that's not sufficient to arrive at a decision. Okay, So we don't have enough information in our data to directly use the exact base approach. So what do you do? In mathematics and in data mining and in practice, in general, when in trouble, you say, well, I can't find the ex exact solution. Do I give up? No, I approximate. Okay, So that's what naive base is all about. It says, I would have loved to do the exact solution. Unfortunately, I cannot do it. Can I find a good approximate solution to the problem? In practice, we have to be pragmatic and accept approximations. It's only in theory that we always want to find the exact correct solution. Okay, so once again, we look here, uh, just to recap what we are talking about. So we know from this information, probability of buyer is 0.33. Probability of buyer given Mexico is much higher. It's five out of nine, it is 0.55. So the point is we are saying that evidence changes the probability. It enables better predictions. So if you're simply told, I've got a random person, what's the probability of being a buyer? It's only 0.33. But the moment I add more predictor information, I say the country is Mexico immediately I can get a more accurate value for the probability. Of course, in general, in life, when we are given evidence, we need to be willing to change our beliefs. That's what we are doing. here. We are changing our beliefs of probability based on evidence. Now, just to lay out some terminology, we had already spoken about it earlier. This probability of simply being a buyer without any conditions attached, that is called as the prior probability or sometimes referred to as a priori probability. And this other probability is the posterior probability or a posteriori probability. Okay, so these are two terms that are generally used in statistics, prior and posterior. Okay, so what is going on in data mining? So before data mining, that is without data mining, we really don't know the connection between the evidence and the outcome. Okay. We might have some guesses as to what the how the evidence affects the outcome, but without looking at the data, we really don't know what this connection is. In data mining, what we do is we've got training data and the data mining algorithm takes a really close look at the training data. It analyzes the data, sifts for underlying patterns and everything. And ultimately, once it's done, we now have some idea of what is it that relates the outcome to the evidence. In other words, outcome now is a function of the evidence and we have some idea of what is the nature of this function. That's really what we are trying to do in data mining. Of course, when I say function, I'm using the term somewhat loosely, not in a very mathematical sense, but we are saying, what is the pattern? What is it that connects the evidence to the outcome? So once I know the evidence, I can apply the method and try to guess or predict the outcome much better than what I could have done without the evidence and without the algorithm. That's really what we are trying to do here in data mining. Okay, so we are saying we want to find the probability of delay given x and we already know that there's a thumbs down for x. In other words, we don't have enough data for x in our database, so we cannot do exact algorithms. So we're going to approximate and before we look at how exactly we are going to do this approximation, we have to understand what is called as the Bayes theorem. That's really what guides 
the approximation. There is a resultant Bayes theorem which helps us to derive what this approximation can look like. And Bayes theorem was invented by Thomas Bayes or discovered by Thomas Bayes who lived between 1701 and 1761 in England. I picked this photograph out of Wikipedia uh, but Wikipedia itself says that it's dubious whether this picture is really a picture of Thomas Bayes or not. Nevertheless, it's a good idea to put a picture to a face, to a name, so uh, a face to a name. So that's what I've done here. Okay. So let's now try to understand a little bit about what is this Bayes theorem. 